now. Some precautions, let's go over that, is you, you have to have your parameters, right? When it comes to borrowing, you don't want to end up like a Dave Ramsey who borrowed a ton of money in real estate, went completely broke or lost everything and had to restart. And now he's got a different perspective on money and how it works. You don't want to end up like that. You want to, you want to learn from Dave Ramsey's mistakes. You want to learn from these other successful influencers that made tons and tons of mistakes when it came to borrowing and lending and investing using debt. You want to say, okay, well, it looks like their only issue was they over leveraged. So my main caution to people is to not over leverage. Well, what does that mean, Denzel? Not over leverage. So you'll see, you'll, you'll hear me use the percentage 66% quite often, right? I use that quite a bit uh, in regards to chunking at debt or making an investment, right? Chunking at debt or making an investment, right, is I usually stick around here, 66%. Now, to solidify that number, I also take your cash flow per month, conservative. What is a conservative cash flow? Say, for example, you make seven grand a month, you spend five religiously per month, you have whatever debt, you're cash flowing, say, 2K. Seven minus five is two grand right? A conservative cash flow number would be like you, you either lowball your, your seven, you could say, okay, yeah, I make seven grand, but of the seven grand, uh, really 700 of that comes from like commissions or comes from my side hustle. So then I would say, all right, well, actual guaranteed income per month is 6,300. So 6,300 minus five grand is actually 1,300. So you're really cash flowing on the low end between 13 and two grand. And I might, you know, say, call it in the middle and say, all right, conservative cash flow per month is 1,500 bucks. So I look at your conservative cash flow per month times it by 12. 1,500 times 12, 18 grand a year. So I say, okay, 18 grand, got it. Let's say you have a HELOC and you're watching Denzel's videos and he's like, oh yeah, you know, you, you chunk 66% of your line of credit, da, da, da. And you get all excited before you do that, watch more videos so you can piece it all together. Let's say you got a HELOC at 50K, 66% of 50,000 is 33,000, is that correct? Yep, 33,000. So then in your mind, you say, okay, wait a minute. Denzel said chunk 66%, I have 50K. If I chunk 33K, how long is it gonna pay me? How long is it gonna take to pay back the 33,000? Ideally, you wanna be able to bring your chunks down to zero within a six to nine month range and then max being 12 months is the absolute max, right? When you start going longer than that, you're, you're, you're pushing it because something could happen in the economy and maybe the bank decreases your credit limit. They cut you off, they freeze your account, right? So that's another thing is accounts being frozen. We'll add that to the list. I would say the number one reason why people get their accounts frozen on their HELOCs or PLOCs for the most part, or maybe with credit cards, their, their um, credit limit decreases is because they simply over leveraged according to their four major numbers. And the bank knows this. The bank knows this. They see it. They know your numbers better than most of you do. Most people that don't spend time on their numbers, 
the bank actually knows your numbers better than you do, right? They see how much paychecks come in, how much you spend. They see your activity. Come on. They're studying you all day long, seeing how you spend, seeing where you spend. And that's how they get you, right? They're just tracking. It's big data. They're tracking all your movement. So they know your numbers. They know who to cut off and who to keep. It's that simple. So when you see articles of people doing velocity banking, and then it's a, it's a negative article. Oh, my account got frozen. My HELOC, da, 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 da. Well, number one, they weren't even doing velocity banking. I could probably guarantee you that. If they were, they weren't doing it correctly. The third thing is they over leveraged. They took out the whole 50 grand and they tried to consolidate all their debt into their mortgage. Terrible idea. They took the 50 grand, they redid the kitchen and then COVID hit. Terrible idea. If you can't afford to do the kitchen, why are you borrowing more debt when you've got credit cards, the mortgage itself, your car loan, your student loans, your credit cards, your personal loan, your medical bills. What the hell are you doing remodeling a kitchen? Maximize the kitchen that you're in. Maximize the bathroom for the time being. Fix this. This is your major problem. Fix your income. Put yourself in a better position. Knock out your bad debt. Increase your cash flow. Positioning. Positioning is key. Very, 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 very key. So to solidify the number, if 33,000 makes sense according to these numbers, I can tell you, no, it does not make sense because conservatively, the cash flow is 18,000. Accurate cash flow is 24,000 in a year. So 33 is a little too high for me to commit to the 66, although that is the standard of measurement when we're doing velocity banking. But you have to understand in terms of leveraging, right? So if this HELOC was 20,000, then it would make total sense to do 66%. If the HELOC was 25,000, it'd make total sense. But you got 50K, it doesn't mean go use 50K. It doesn't also mean go use 33,000. It does not mean that, not at all. You want to look, you want to pay attention. Okay, if my, if my conservative cash flow per year is 18, more accurate is 24,000, then maybe between 24 and 33, I find a midway number, maybe a chunk of uh, maybe 28K, maybe 25, you know, or if I went from 18 to 33, somewhere in the middle, 25, 26, 28, is a little bit cleaner for me and it's below 66 percent that's a bit cleaner according to the numbers right let's say the let's say the heloc was 30 grand so twenty thousand dollars less so if it was thirty thousand times 66 percent that's nineteen thousand eight hundred oh that's a lot cleaner that's a lot cleaner right so that's right between that 18, okay, 18 conservative, uh, more accurate, it's 24. If I do a $19,800 chunk and just stick to that, okay, cool. If I, if I have a guaranteed cash flow of 2,000 a month, let's say, let's say the 7,000 was their 40 hour a week guaranteed pay each and every month and they're cash flowing 24 grand, then that does give me permission to go above 66%. That's when I'll violate the rule sometimes, but even then I may not do it. But it just goes to show that we could have a little flexibility there. Is that called over leveraging? Not necessarily if you're in a well financial position. So they could be cash flowing two grand a month, but also have a cash value life insurance policy with $20,000 in cash value built up, then they have a 401k that they could potentially borrow from if, you know, it got really bad if they lost their job or if they have an emergency fund with 15 grand in cash. So they got all these other things, all these other assets going on that maybe, yeah, we could go above the 19.8 and do the full 24, 
and just chunk, chunk exactly according to cash flow times 12, that's about the highest that I would go though, right? So if your cash flow times 12 is actually more than 66% of the credit limit, that is the only time that I will uh, violate the 66% rule that I personally have. But at the end of the day, up to the client to make that decision. Conservatively, just do 66. More aggressive, do your cash flow times 12 because when you do the math, remember, we wanna have it done within six to nine months, 12 being the max. If my cash flow is 24,000 a year and I chunk 24,000, just going off cash flow alone, making an extra payment of 2,000 a month back to the HELOC, the line of credit would be paid off by the 12th month, right? Because the 24,000, I threw it at other debt that increased my cash flow by say 700 bucks. So now my cash flow is 2,700. So if my cash flow is 2,700, I chunk 24,000, 2,700 times 12, whatever that number is, obviously it's more than 24,000. Uh-oh, we're in the six to nine month range. That line of credit would be at zero just based off extra payments, ladies and gentlemen, not doing velocity banking. You add velocity banking into the mix where you're dumping your whole entire income into the debt tool, uh-oh, we go faster, we pay less in interest, and then you attach a credit card to your strategy with cashback rewards, right? We're earning cashback rewards, one to 3%, which is helping you offset your borrowing costs. The fact that you just borrow from Peter to pay Paul you just offset your borrowing costs on that, you're in the green. No bank is gonna bother you. I've never had a client so far do this strategy, stick to it, be know their numbers, and they got their accounts frozen. Not one. I think I've had one client that, or, or I've had a few clients had their credit limits decreased, not on HELOCs, but I think on credit cards. And then I did have a client with a personal line of credit where the term expired. So then it turns into, you know, regular payment. And then same with HELOCs. I've had clients before like working with me, they had a home equity line of credit and then it turned into a home equity loan. They thought they had a HELOC, then it's a home equity loan. So they were confused, but for the most part, I haven't had any client so far I'm, that I can remember, right? Maybe, maybe there's one that had a, a credit limit decreased on a HELOC that I can't think of right now. But I haven't had a client say, I haven't had a bad experience with a client say, Denzel, you told me to do this, and no, 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 you told me to chunk, and then it all went to hell. I haven't had that issue yet because Although velocity banking is amazing, concept works great, the way I teach it is still very conservative because there's so much more you can do with the concept, but I'm still very like conservative with it in, in how I borrow and how I leverage and things like that. Those are my thoughts.